Hey, again. Hey, I'm not done talking. I wanted to finish the thought there, and that was that you're going to hell. If you think that just by conquering the system, in other words, by playing the game successfully and gaining a whole bunch of material wealth, worldly wealth, that somehow that's going to save you, well, I've got news for you because you will go to hell. And, you know, Jesus told a parable about a guy that had saved up, you know, a lot of his crop. He had all kinds of extra stuff and, you know, he was rich, in other words. And, you know, he thought he could, the guy thought he could just sit back and take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry, that sort of attitude, and become a decadent slob. And the next thing you know, that very night, his life was taken from him. And this is the state of affairs. This is what we must relentlessly, constantly remember is that our lives are in the hands of the cosmic divine force, whatever you want to call that, you know, force, what, of course, most people call God. And in other, you know, of course, in other languages and other cultures, they'll call it something different. And uh, it's a law for Muslims and, and the Jews. I'm not sure what they say, but uh, they're kind of afraid to use the word. Uh, but a lot of people, uh, you know, they have a different term. But, you know, like if you go to a 12-step program, you'll hear God referred to as the higher power. But whatever it is, this is the only one we owe our allegiance to. And this is not mandated that we do it, but it's mandated in the sense that if you want to find true happiness, if you want to find true peace and joy and contentment and safety and security and prosperity, it comes from the hand of God. And you don't want it coming from any other pseudo source, any other phony false source, okay? You want it to come from that one so that it's approved from on high. This, why, this is why to me, I know already, I don't have to go out and make a vast fortune to know it's not going to make me content. It's not gonna make me feel good. It's not gonna make me happy. I can see the end from the beginning and every one of us has that same power, that same propensity, that potential, that capacity to see the end from the beginning. In other words, you don't need to drive your car drunk in order to see the, what the end result could be, likely will be, a, an accident, a ticket, something very bad is gonna happen to you. Uh, but uh, you know, it's the same thing with anything. You can, if you try, if you say, God help me to see what's going on here. And I'd like to help people to see what, how this whole thing is gonna unfold and the positive nature of what is coming upon the earth but this struggle, this battle that we have to get through, this battle of Armageddon is happening on a literal, physical, tangible level here on earth with all these evil forces coming together to fight against good. But it's also happening in a spiritual realm. It's happening in the heavens like the Bible talks about. That God has other beings. Beings that are more powerful. Uh, wiser beings that are able to carry out His orders at will upon the earth and this is to me it's not very hard to believe it's all written in the Bible you gotta believe somebody and you know you've got to, if you're gonna believe any history understand there's nobody alive today that can you could you know cross-examine today in a courtroom and say is this testimony true you gotta you gotta say if you're is this true or not understand you know about knowledge it's very controversial I take the Bible for example for you know, the, the Dark Ages came about because the Roman Catholic Church was trying to keep the Holy Bible, that's the, 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 the Holy Scriptures, from the general public. They didn't want the commoners to have this, this wealth of great knowledge and comfort. They wanted the commoners to have to go to the religious authorities to get that. So they wanted to control that information. And so this brought on the Dark Ages, the, you know, the Medieval Ages, the uh, Crusades, the Inquisitions, all this stuff came from trying to ban knowledge. If people knew that today, this whole counterculture movement, you know, that's out there today with, you know, a lot of people getting tattooed up and all this, I get it. These are people that are revolting from, you know, the, the, uh, the status quo, establishmentarian way of thinking. And they say, no, we're, we're rebels and we're, we're admitted we're, we're not shrinking away from that, we're, you know, not, I don't like to use the word proud, you know, but they are unabashed, you know, they're candid about saying, look, I don't believe in that culture, that, you know, this uh, the establishment culture, so I'm going the other direction. 
And I get that. I'm glad because you know what? This whole thing is going to unravel for these monsters that are running our lives because the information is getting out there and it's getting out there through the hand of God. And God is working through individual people and he's working collectively as well. So we're going to figure out that these people have been lying to us, that nobody on the face of the earth has to be poor. Nobody's got to go hungry. Nobody's got to go hungry, hungry, homeless. Nobody's got to go without clean water. Nobody's got to go out without even luxury items, all the trinkets and knickknacks and whatnot, okay? Nobody on the face of the earth has to go without those things. There's plenty enough of a willing workforce so that we can all have plenty, an excess, a superfluity of everything that we want. That means that any given time you say, I'm tired of living in this area, I want to go live over here or over there, you'd be free to do that. There'd be vacant housing available all over the earth. We'd be even more productive than we already have been under this pseudo-capitalistic system that's really nothing more than fascism. It's market manipulation, it's price fixing, it's the government acting as a special interest group in and unto itself and working with private interest and conspiring against the public at large. That's the masses. And I can point to empirical evidence to, 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 to point that out, okay? I can show you that in California, for an example, and as goes California, so goes the rest of the country, and for the rest of the world for that matter, that we have lost prosperity here, and it's in the home ownership. This has traditionally been the best metric, best gauge, best metric measure prosperity is home ownership and we've lost it okay now the majority of Californians are renting and that number keeps growing and going up as people lose their houses to these banking schemes and frauds you know the sorcerers that wrote up the fine print uh, so you understand how this this system is is falling apart as I speak and it can't hold on forever we know that but these people are going to take it to the bitter end. They're going to try to convince the most people to have faith in it. Just wait a little longer. The economy will get better. It's all going to turn around. It's not. As long as the currency remains unsound, the system cannot turn around on an overall basis to whereby the wealth disparity shrinks, which would be a good thing, right? We want equality, right? There can be, nobody could say, well, a little bit of inequality is okay. No, it, it, when it comes to money, it can't be. Sound currency, stable currency, would bring us into a state where we would have universal prosperity, full prosperity, not just in America or in your community, but worldwide. And this is what these people dread more than anything, these people that are creating the policies we have to live under that they're exempt from. They make us believe in things like taxes, and this is the solution. Well, if you can't get more taxes to fix the problem, then, you know, the problem's just going to get worse. So, you know, blame people for being cheap and not wanting to pay their taxes while they keep increasing your tax load. They put the nation in debt, they put the state in debt, they put the individual in debt. And they don't ever want you out of that debt. They want to heap more debt upon it, okay? And the way the debt gets paid back is through increasing your tax load, you understand? Then they just, they just do what they call uh, debt maintenance. So more and more of your tax dollars that you keep pouring, you say, okay, well, more taxes will fix the problem. So they coerce and force and intimidate people to pay more taxes. The problem gets worse. Then we've got these agencies set up that they have an interest in maintaining the problem because if the problem goes away, their job goes away. Do you see what they've done? Do you see how, how diabolical these people are? How, what evil geniuses they are, okay? And how that they have manipulated us to the nth degree, okay? There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? We are all under a spell that these people have inflicted upon us. And the only way out of that spell is, again, turning to God. Every one of us can do this on our own personal, individual basis and say, God, help me to understand. Help me to see clearly, to clear the slate, and to really see through your eyes what you want and what I need to be preparing myself for and my family for the world of tomorrow, what's to come. I need to figure out how I, will I be able to learn and get along with my fellow man in a world void of money. Can I handle it, Father? Can I handle having prosperity without being beholden to the money masters in some way, some measure? Can I do it? And that's what we all got to figure out on our own individually and then make that decision on our own. But that's the world I want to be in. I hate my life in this world. And it all comes down to that. That's what it's all about. You know, I've been a single man for a long time. And you know what, if you think I'm okay with it, think again, okay? I, 
there's nobody on earth that enjoyed being a couple more than myself. I love to have a wife. I love to be uh, whole because I think that's the greatest thing, gift in this world we can ever have is that wholeness you get from being married. I really do. But, you know, I don't blame that for all my problems. I blame all my problems on the system, on this pseudo-capitalist, this pseudo-unreality. It's just an unreality that's been inflicted upon me. And I'm tired of seeing it keep descending into hell. That's where they're trying to bring everybody. Believe me, trust me. You, you know, be deceived by me, by my trickery, because it's the best you got going. And if you don't have money, man, you don't eat, man, you don't have money, you don't have a roof over your head, man, you don't have money, you don't have water. You're going to die without money. You got nothing. You're nobody. You're immoral. It's bad, right? It's immoral. You know, uh, the schools aren't teaching any ethics or morality. They're, they're labeling religious. But this is the most valuable learning you can have is ethics and moral fiber. Okay, this is the greatest gift in the world. And they're trying to, they're calling up, down, and down, up. It's completely in, an inverted reality. It's topsy-turvy. It makes no sense. And they know that. These people, remember, they're, they're, they're evil genius. They know. But they are on this track and they can't get off. It's that inertia's got them. They're addicted. There's nowhere to go. They're just safe in their money. They're, you know, that's it. I've got the money printing rights and all these minions that go along with me and have faith in me and trust in me. And, you know, they're big bad boys and girls too. And they're willing to do anything and live outside the golden rule, murder whoever gets in their way of, of keep, you know, keep it containing, continuing to have power and authority over the masses through this money-based reality. Okay, I mean, you know what, and you wonder why I hate my life in this world. I'm supposed to hate my life in this world. But I also am very content in the knowledge that my personal slate is clear. I see things the way that God wants me to see things. Okay, I love my fellow man in the way that God wants me to love my fellow man. I have pity and mercy because I have pity and mercy for myself. I'm pathetic. So when I see a pathetic person, I am listening to a pitiable, pathetic person. Listen. I myself get it because that is what our fleshly nature, that worldly nature, that's you know the low common denominator that it brings us to. It makes us feel this big and it's not a good thing but you know what? It's important that it brings us humility. It's humbling if you take it the right way. If you don't put a wall of pride up there and say, well this feels bad. I don't like this humility. Okay, I want to be arrogant and proud and I want to be egotistical and vain. You know, this is what makes me feel good, conceit. I want people to look at me and see how great my accomplishments are and all that. It's not about that, it's about Him. It's about saying, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let your will be done in my life. Let me think the way you want me to think. Let me recognize you as the sole source of every good quality, characteristic, and attribute. It's not my parents that gave it to me. Yeah, they may give me some good sound teaching. But it's you. You are the source. You are my owner. Okay, you love me and understand me in a way I need to be loved and understood. That nobody else on earth can love and understand me that way. I can't love and understand myself that way. Sometimes I'm disgusted by my own thoughts. I'm disgusted by my own words and deeds. Okay, but you, God, you understand me and you forgive me. You have mercy on me. You have compassion and empathy for me. And we have to go out, embrace those qualities, and show those qualities to our fellow man. And say, you know what, God? I know where happiness lies. It lies in your hands. You are the giver of all true happiness. It's not from these idiots that are running the world. It's not them. They're just, you know, they're, they, this is satanic, okay? These people prowl about, like the scriptures say, like roaring lions seeking who they may devour. They hate even each other. If it came down to it, these people would murder each other. So when they're all stuck in hell, you can imagine if Dick Cheney tells George Bush, hey, I want you to serve me. You know, it's down to you and me that are left here. We've killed all the other minions that wouldn't serve us. So what's going to happen? It'd be one killing the other. This is why it's his spirit of Satan. It's really they're just embodying that spirit of Satan. You know, lying, cheating, and, you know, that they, you know, this that they believe in their own lies and their deceit. And they're, they're projecting that. So, you know, they're trustworthy. They seem to believe what they're saying, but, you know, they talk sideways out of both sides of their mouth. They're not reliable. They're not trustworthy. They're not 